So what's the best Serato DJ controller in 2024? Should you even be using Serato DJ software in 2024? That's what we're going to be talking about in today's live show. I've got most of the controllers I'm going to talk to you about actually here with me today, including this one here, which we'll be talking about very shortly. We'll talk about controllers at all price ranges and for all types of DJs. If you're thinking about Serato, switching to Serato or upgrading your Serato controller, this is for you. As ever, we're live where you can chat on all channels and I'll talk to as many of you as I can towards the end of this, but that does mean I want to give everyone time to turn up. So we're going to run our own intro sequence and then we'll get going. I'll see you in 30. So hello YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, wherever you're watching us, good to have you here. Serato is what we're talking about today. We are Digital DJ Tips, the world's leading online DJ school, and we have got everything in this studio to show you, to help you choose what Serato DJ system might be right for you. And we've got all our advice to share as well. As I say, whatever platform you're on, do ask questions towards the end. I'll answer as many as I can. Uh, and this is all in an article as well, which you'll find over on the Digital DJ Tips website. Just head there and click on the free guides at the top and find the best Serato DJ controllers for 2024 article as well, which I'm gonna be basing the advice I'm giving you today on. So, if you're new to all of this, why would you want to use Serato? There's other software out there. If you're in America, if you're into hip-hop, the chances are Serato is what all your friends use. It's what you see people using in the clubs that you go to. But it's not always the case. Different software has different strengths and weaknesses, and different regions prefer their programs and so on. So, why would you choose Serato? Well, I've just given you a hint. Serato came out of the scratch and turntable worlds and hip hop and that's where it's kind of started and it's kind of grown from there. It was originally just for using literally with turntables, like real turntables and you just controlled your software on your laptop with Serato running on the laptop. And then they made a version of the software called Serato Itch and Serato Itch went with Serato Scratch. See, Scratch and Itch, you see what they did there? Yeah, no one really liked that. So they soon ditched that idea, folded it all into one piece of software, which is the Serato we know and many of us love today. So that's kind of the history of that software platform. But now Serato is good for everything. Serato is a great software platform that you can use to DJ with whatever kind of music you're into. So it is a software platform. Primarily, Serato is designed to be used with DJ controllers. A DJ controller, something like this here, is a piece of equipment that is no good unless you plug it into your laptop. So Serato is software that runs on your laptop and plugs into a DJ controller. Now it can plug into pro gear like this stuff and it can plug into some of the DJ gear that doesn't actually need a laptop all the time and all that, but it still runs on your computer at all times. Your computer is where everything happens. The music's in your computer. The mixing's happening in your computer. The, the gear is just fancy keyboard and mouse. That's all it is, it's fancy keyboard and mouse. This gives you far, far, far more fun controls than trying to do it with keyboard shortcuts and trackpads and stuff, right? So it's important to know that if you're new to this, Serato is essentially laptop DJ software. It's not something you use away from your laptop ever. Okay, there is other laptop DJ software out there. Serato does have its strengths. The big strengths of Serato are that anything that Serato works with that you plug into it is going to work well. Serato work very, very hard with the manufacturers who make the hardware that works with their gear to make sure that everything just works. It's kind of locked down. And so while it might lack the flexibility of something like Tractor or Virtual DJ, what you gain is it's always going to work, the simplicity. Now I say simplicity, but it has got a lot going on. It's got stems, for instance, which is kind of like the battleground for DJing at the moment, instant acapellas and all that. And they're very, very good in Serato. It's also got add-ons for things like video and so on. So it's got everything you need, but at the same time, it's designed to be 
relatively easy to use. All DJ software is frankly complicated unless you've got someone like us helping you do it. That's why we're here. Uh, but it is easy to use, relatively speaking. So Serato is a good choice. Now, what you need to bear in mind is if you buy cheaper DJ gear, we're going to look at some cheaper DJ gear very shortly. If you buy cheaper DJ gear, you're going to find that it doesn't come with the full version of Serato. So now I've said why Serato is good. Let me tell you what, before we look at the controllers, I know you want to, uh, I'm going to tell you why I think Serato is not good. Uh, and the reason is that if you buy cheaper gear, it comes with something called Serato DJ Lite, which you do not want. You want Serato DJ Pro, which is the one that's got the features that we all love. It's expensive to upgrade. Now, if you want to go down the subscription route, I think it's about $15 a month. If you want to buy it, it's pricey. You're going to get no change out of $500 to buy the version that you want, which has got all the stuff that, that we teach and that you're going to miss otherwise, which is a lot of money. And if if you buy Serato DJ Pro and then realize that you're missing some features, which you will be because even the Pro version misses some things that you're going to need, the upgrade is even more expensive. You're going to pay even more than that because they don't sell you the little bits that you might want individually like they used to. It's just a big extra sum of money. In short, Serato is blinking expensive. So if your DJ controller doesn't come with the version of Serato you want, and more expensive controllers do, then you're going to be shelling out decent cash to get the version you want. That's the biggest downside, I think, of Serato. I think their pricing's a little bit not very good value for money. And it always was, so it's a shame, but hey, things change. Right, anyway, still good software though, and so let's look at our favourite devices, our favourite controllers. Now, as I say, you can see them all on the Digital DJ Tips website. Here is that article, here is the list. We've got every single controller here. Not only that, but from this, you can click through to full reviews of all of them. So when you find this article, you can click through and there's not only a review, but there's also a video, me talking you through, there's a very excited me, uh, talking you through every single one of these. So it's definitely worth going and seeking out this article if you want to dig deeper into this stuff. However, I'm going to give you all you need to make a decent choice today without you going any further. Let's get started then. So the first one I'm going to show you, and these aren't in any particular order, is the one I've got on the table in front of me, uh, basically because it's on the table in front of me. It's this one here. It's the Rain 4. Now, the Rain 4 is a relatively modern controller. Uh, it knocks it out of the park. It's got so many firsts on it. So it's the first Rain controller with four channels. That's the first thing. It's the first Rain controller that doesn't have motorized jog wheels. These are just very good jog wheels with a vinyl kind of top, but they're not motorized. And it, it was, when it was released, the first controller with proper features for Serato stems for doing things like separating the acapella and the instrumental and quickly putting them on different decks uh, and also for better control of stems down here as well. So a very fully featured controller. Uh, it's a bit strange that it hasn't got motorized jog wheels, but guess what? Just in literally the last few days, we've spotted the old leaks going on out there. And there is actually a motorized version of this, we now think coming, uh, called the Rain Performer. So if you're looking at this thinking, I really like that, but I want motorized jog wheels, hold fire, because it could just be that that one is coming very soon. But the Rain 4, as it stands, is probably the, the most fully featured, certainly one of the most fully featured controllers for Serato. Unlocks the full version of the software, uh, and it's uh, if you can afford it and you don't mind something big because it is quite big and bulky, quite high, uh, it's a very good choice indeed. Around the back, you've got decks that you can plug in so you can put your external CDJs or your external turntables you're probably more likely to want to plug in. That's all there as well. Uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a very nice unit. So that's the Rain 4. The next one, equally very, very nice unit is the Rev 7. So the Rev 7 I do have here, you're going to enjoy me, uh, I'm going to unplug the, the Rain 4, you're going to enjoy me struggling to pick up all these controllers and stick them on the desk so I can show them to you now because I'm determined, I'm going to put this one down off camera, I'm determined to try and show you as many of these as I can. So here's the next one, this is the Rev 7. So the Rev7 is kind of a scratch controller because you can see it's got the scratch layout, right? It's got the pitch controls at the top here and these are motorized jog wheels and this mixer in the middle looks just like a pro mixer. It looks just like something like the DJM S7. If I slot in the DJM S7 mixer there, which is the kind of 
scratch mixer of choice for many DJs, also a Serato thing, we're not talking about this today, but I put that there and take it away, you can see that they have basically replicated that. So if you're a scratch DJ who's used to using turntables and you want to use a controller instead, this could well be the one for you because the layout's like turntables. You see, what scratch DJs do with turntables is turn them around so that the tone arm isn't in the way of your scratching, right? So here, these turntables I've got here uh, are not set up that way. These turntables are set up this way, the normal kind of way with the tone arm here and the pitch control here, right? See my hand in the very bottom right hand corner of the screen. But if I were to turn this 90 degrees, that's kind of like the preferred scratch layout. And that's more like the layout of the deck areas here, right? So that's what's going on here. So the Rev7 uh, is from Pioneer DJ or Alpha Theta, uh, as we are guessing they're slowly rebranding themselves to. Uh, and it's also got these motorized platters. So they've got screens in the middle, which certainly is a first to have motorized and a screen in the middle. So this is kind of the scratch DJ's dream. If the Rain 4 is the kind of open format party, general DJ's dream, this is the scratch DJ's dream because you've got the deck layout, you've got the mixer you're used to here uh, as well. It is bigger than the one I'm gonna show you next actually, the Rain 1, which is, is probably its closest competitor. So you might find this a bit big and that's the one reason you might prefer the Rain 1 controller that I'm about to show you. But look, the Rev 7, if you're after a scratch controller for Serato is, pretty damned unsurpassed. It's a fantastic, fantastic controller. We, we've had a lot of fun with this one. There's also the Rain 5, by the way, which is this one kind of cut down a bit, hasn't got the motorized jog wheels, misses out on a few of the features, uh, less inputs and outputs. I prefer the Rain 7 over the Rain 5, to be honest. Uh, but of course it costs a bit more. So that's the Rain, sorry, uh, the Rev 7 over the Rev 5. Did I say the Rain 5? I don't know. I'm off camera again. The reason I'm off camera again is I'm looking for this one, now this is oh, the Rain 1 that I was just talking to you about. The Rain 1 is smaller. You can see it's kind of like cute. It's cute. It's compact. It's still got the motorized jogs with vinyl on the top. No displays in the middle here. A little bit more of a standard layout. So we've got the pitch controls here uh, and a squashed up mixer. It's still got the paddles for scratch DJing. It's basically a scratch controller still. So you've got your very nice crossfader here and two channels, scratch controllers are always two channels, but it's a lot more compact. I think if you're choosing between this and the Pioneer DJ Rev 7, the size of it is gonna be the thing. Do you want something that's a bit smaller, it's a bit easier to, to move around and so on, or do you want something that's a bit bigger? Yes, the feature sets are not quite the same, but the size is gonna be the thing, and maybe the layout of the decks as well. Uh, but the uh, the Rain one is a lovely controller, and again, it's just one that we've had a lot of fun with uh, making tuition here at Digital DJ Tips. Over the years, we can thoroughly recommend it. It's, uh, it's, it's a thoroughbred, very well made, nothing wrong, and all these, in all these controllers so far unlock the full version of Serato DJ Pro and I'm pretty sure they all come with uh, an add-on that you need called pitch and time which lets you do clever things with key. I'm pretty sure they all do the ones I've just shown you and you do need that. I mean Serato we could talk for hours about their pricing. I'm not the biggest fan of it but that's one of the quirks. Anyway, Rain 1. It's a belter and again full reviews of all of these over on the website if you want to look further. Now all of these controllers so far are designed for Serato only. The next one isn't. The next one, it's got a little trick up its sleeve. Now, if you are a follower of this brand, and I'm sure most of you will be, because it is the most popular brand in DJing, you will know that this controller, the Flex 10 from Pioneer DJ, doesn't only work with Serato. It also works with their own record box software. So that's why it's called Flex, because it's flexible software, right? Now, the Flex 10 is a great controller. If you like the look of the Rain 4, with all its stems controls and stuff like that, but you want something that's a little bit lighter, uh, that Rain 4 is metal, this is kind of like a bit more plasticky. So it's still very, very well made, but it's, it's certainly a lighter controller. And you also like the idea of being able to use maybe Rekordbox alongside Serato, this is definitely one to look at. Now, this was the replacement for the very, very popular DDJ-1000, which blew controllers apart, blew the whole controller world apart. The reason that that controller did that, and that was for record box. The reason that controller did that, it, it was the first controller, it's many years ago now, that put effects down the right-hand side of the mixer, just like a club mixer, just like this club mixer here, effects down, no. But 
DJ controllers didn't do that until the DDJ-1000 for Pioneer DJ. They had effects in different places, normally above the jog wheels and stuff, and that was cool, but it wasn't what DJs were used to. And so this controller called the DDJ-1000 came along and it adopted this layout on the mixer, the basic club mixer layout, just the same as this club mixer here. And so that meant that DJs were instantly at home with it and it did extremely well. Then they launched one called the DDJ-1000 SRT, SRT standing for Serato. And this one is kind of the replacement for both of them. So there's only one now and it works with both pieces of software. That does mean there are some slight compromises on the controls. So some of the controls at the top here don't do exactly the same on the Serato implementation as they do on Rekordbox, which it was primarily made for. It's primarily a Rekordbox controller. So it does lose a mark there because it's not quite right for Serato. The odd thing isn't labeled right and so on. You'll get used to it and it's got some great features like for instance you can split the stems and put different vocals, drums and instruments through the effects and leaving everything else clean. It's a lovely controller, four channels, it's got all the inputs on the back for your external stuff, it works with Serato DJ Pro and all that stuff. But just be aware that this controller is made primarily for Rekordbox and so while it works with and comes with Serato there are those little compromises going on there. Let's look at another controller now as we look through our favorite Serato DJ controllers for 2024. Let's look at another one now, which is interesting in that it doesn't only work with Serato. And that is the Reloop Mixon. So the Reloop Mixon 8 Pro, to give it its full title, is a very favorite controller of ours. And you can tell by the way that I am rambling on that I just very nearly dropped a very expensive controller on the floor, but I didn't. And that's all that counts. Here's the Mixon. So the Mixon 8 is fa fa a favorite of ours for a few reasons. One, we just like it. I mean, it's okay to just like controllers. Look, it's got huge pads here, which we liked. Four paddles. I mean, you don't normally see four paddles on a controller because this tends to be on a scratch controller with just, just two paddles, right? Uh, and it's got the classic controller layout that I was just talking about. Remember I said that controllers tend to have now effects down here which are kind of like custom. But this has got full effects control over Serato using the old fashioned way of laying the effects out up here, which gives you far deeper control over the effects. Also old fashioned, if you put a mirror down the middle, then you would see that it is mirror image, not symmetrical. That deck is different to that deck because the pitch controls are up the left hand side there and the right hand side there. And the play and pause and so on are down here instead of being a mirror image, in which case you'd expect these ones to be there, right? So it's quirky, it's nice, we like it. External inputs and outputs, very good. But the thing about the software here is it also works with Algorithms DJ Pro software. Algorithms DJ Pro is great, but the thing Algorithms DJ Pro has got that no other software has got, mainstream software has got, is a very, very good iPad app. And so this has got a slot in the back for you to put your iPad right up to the big iPad Pros. So you could put a big iPad Pro in the back here, plug it in and have almost a standalone DJ system with a kind of integrated computer that way. Or you can use it with Serato plugging into your laptop like normal. So it's very flexible or indeed Algorithms DJ software on your laptop. So we like the Mixon 8 Pro. I'm not sure if it comes with the pitch and time add-on you need for Serato DJ Pro in order to make it work. Uh, I don't remember. Uh, that. So I'm not sure if it even, yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know. So you'll have to check the review. I mean, it's all there in the review. That's why I keep saying, go and have a look at the article on the website where we go through all of this, because you'll find not only our roundup, but you'll also find a link to the full review as well. Uh, so it's good if you think you're going to want to use the iPad as well. If not, you've got this kind of redundant slot at the top here. But if you're not sure if you want to use those two pieces of software, um, or if you're not sure which one you want to use and you want to keep your options open, it's a good idea. It's a nice controller. As I say, we, we like it. It's just quirky. It's just nice to use. Uh, we've had a lot of fun with this. These are all our favorites, by the way. Other controllers are available for Serato. There's an awful lot of them out there. And there's some very good ones out there. Uh, but we're just giving you our personal favorites here. So just because your one might not be on it, don't think it's no good. It's not what this is about. We'd be here for hours if I was going through everything. Uh, but I'm just going through the ones that we particularly like uh, for whatever reason. All right. So that is the Reloop. Now, one that I actually think is quite possibly my favorite Serato controller of all time. It always surprises people, this one, because it certainly doesn't look anything special. 
is this one here. It's the little Roland 707M. M stands for mobile, so it's made for mobile DJs. It's small, it's light. I couldn't do that with anything I've shown you so far, but it's so powerful. It sounds great. It's got incredible inputs and outputs for wiring and everything you want. I mean, so have the others so far, but it's got some stuff on that you don't find on any other Serato controllers. If you're a mobile DJ, could just be the one for you. It's a lot cheaper than some of the others, by the way, as well. Uh, so let's put it on the desk and I'll tell you what it's got. So you can see now how much smaller it is than the other ones. And it's mainly down to the jog wheels. Now, if you like big jog wheels, this won't be for you, uh, but they're perfectly usable. Everything about this is high quality. There's nothing lacking quality wise. But what it's got that I absolutely love, apart from, as I say, great sound quality, is two things. One, it's got what's called a zone output. And that means you can play different music using one of the four channels in a different zone and then use the other three channels where you actually are. So if you're a mobile DJ and you're DJing with say a reception room next door, you can put music on a playlist coming through this channel here to the reception and then use this to play to the room you're actually in. Very versatile. Also, it's got EQ after the faders. So most DJ controllers will just have a volume control after the faders for making it louder or quieter. Like there's the master volume control on here. This has got EQ, compression, limiters, and all that kind of stuff that you can program in the unit so that if you're DJing somewhere where the PA system is a bit bassy, you can take the bass out and you're not DJing by turning the bass down on every channel like this, right? I'm sure we've all done that in order to make the room sound good. So you can EQ the room internally and then you can DJ as you would anywhere else with all your, all your EQs in the middle and only moving them for, for, for mixing, for effects, you know, for creative uses. Even better, you can then save your settings so if you've got perfect settings for one bar that you play in and different settings for a club you play in and different settings for a particular venue you do weddings in or whatever, you can save all the settings in here and it will remember them. So when you next go to the venue, you just dial in that venue, bang, all the EQ is right for that venue. A really thoughtful controller and it is our pick of the bunch really, I think, for Serato. I just think they got it right with this one. An unsung hero. Uh, we do like the 707M from Roland. Okay. These have all been quite expensive. Let's go and look at the cheaper end of the market now for your first DJ controller. So this is how we teach the way you should enter the world of owning DJ equipment here at Digital DJ Tips. You should buy something cheap at the beginning because you don't know what you really need. Like the big expensive controllers I've shown you now go into four figures, some of them like $2,000 or whatever. You don't know if you need that. You don't know if you want that. And they're all different to each other. There's a big difference between the scratch two channel controllers that cost you thousands and the four channel controllers that don't have motorized jog wheels that cost you thousands, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You don't know which one you need. You don't know which one's right for you until you've got into DJing, until you've been DJing for a year or two. So there's absolutely no point spending that money unless you're really rich on something like that. You might as well get something that's really good, but it'll cost you far less. And then when it's time to upgrade, you'll know what you want to upgrade to. So we always advise you to start with a cheap controller. And so I'm going to show you a couple now. Now, the good thing about cheap controllers is you can always keep it when it's time to upgrade because you're always going to need a backup, right? So it's okay if you've spent a bit of money on a cheaper controller, you can keep it and it's your backup controller in case something happens at your gigs and you need to plug something in to carry on DJing, otherwise you'd be stuck, right? All pro DJs have a backup. Or you can sell it and you'll only lose a little bit compared to selling an expensive controller when you would lose a lot. All right, so start with the cheap controller. Uh, let's have a look at a couple of them. Right, this one's the more, most expensive of the cheap controllers I'm about to show you, uh, which is ironic because it's also the smallest. Isn't that cute? This was designed by our own DJ Angelo, who's behind our DJ Angelo's course that you'll find in our courses area here at Digital DJ Tips. Uh, and Angelo wanted a controller that he could use to prepare his DJ sets on Serato in hotel rooms, on the move and so on. Had to be small, had to be light, able to, able to pack in a bag, but had to have all the features. So this has got full effects control. It's got full pads controlling all the Serato stuff there. And the only compromise it's got is it's got low and high EQ rather than low, mid and high EQ. Apart from that, they've squished everything in here. Now it doesn't come with Serato DJ Pro. If you don't own Serato DJ Pro, you're gonna be subscribing or spending hundreds and hundreds and hundreds more, more than the cost of the controller. 
to get the pro software. Obviously there's no sockets around the back for plugging in your decks and stuff. This is a tiny little software controller. It is a great way to add a second controller to your system. I would say for a first controller, probably not the best bet. One, it's a bit more expensive than the other ones I'm about to show you, and two, it's a bit smaller, a bit cramped. It's the kind of thing that makes a great second controller, frankly. The Reloop Ready, uh, but we do love the Ready. And we love Angelo too. Shout out to DJ Angelo. How are you, my friend? Right, two more to show you then. And the first one is going to be the smaller, younger brother or sister of the Flex 10 from Pioneer DJ Stroke Alpha Theta. It's the Flex 4. Now the Flex 4 is a landmark controller. I mean, they tend to be. They, they tend to, they've had a couple of misses, Pioneer DJ Stroke Alpha Theta. I think the Flex 6, by the way, is a monster, horrible controller. Really not into that one. This one though, we love. This again is a replacement for a controller that did extremely well, which was called the DDJ 400, which was only for Recordbox, I believe anyway. Pretty sure it was only for Recordbox. Yes, it was. Uh, this is called the Flex 4 because it's for Recordbox and Serato again. So again, it's actually mapped up for Recordbox primarily. Some of the labeling is going to be a little bit different if you're a Serato user, but as a basic Serato controller that does the business and that also works with Recordbox, and that's the key thing, this is the one. Again, it doesn't come with the pro software. You're going to need that or you're going to need to subscribe or spend a lot of money for that. But as a starter controller, you can't go wrong with the Flex 4. It's proven. The design hasn't really changed much from the previous one, which sold by the bucket load and which we taught on. James Hype, our tutor, uses the Flex 4 very happily to DJ on when he wants to play on something small. You can't get more pro than James. He's more happy DJing on this than anything else. Uh, but when it comes down to it, he's happy on one of these, albeit he uses it with Recordbox. But anyway, as a piece of hardware, it's great. Uh, it's, it's got everything you need. And it, as I say, if you're learning to DJ, you don't need anything more than this. So don't think you do. This has got more on it than, you know, two turntables and a mixer. Uh, which we learned on and which we happily played on for our whole careers, frankly. So look, it's got everything you need. Uh, the little Flex 4, and it's not that expensive. Now, you may want to go for this one instead. This is the Pioneer DJ Stroke Alpha Theta DDJ Rev 1. This is the Serato controller at the bottom end of their range. So while the Flex 4 is for both software, this one here is only for Serato. Now have a look at this. What does it remind you of? Albeit a lot smaller. It reminds you of the Rev 7, right? Because look, we've got the same decks with the pitch controls up here, like a turntable turned around 90 degrees as a scratch DJ would do. We've got the same dinky little mixer in the middle with its paddles and its pads, just like a scratch mixer. This is like honey, I shrunk the scratch system. This has got the layout and look and feel and the controls roughly in the same place as you would find DJing on its big brother, the DDJ Rev 7, but it's gonna cost you far, far less. Again, Serato DJ Lite, you're gonna need the, the pro software. Again, no external inputs and outputs, barring the, you know, the standard microphone input. But if you are a scratch DJ and you wanna learn on something uh, that's not gonna break your bank, but that's got the same kind of layout and feel of scratch gear, this is the one, the DDJ Rev 1 from, uh, from Pioneer DJ for Serato only. So you don't get any other software with this. It's why we, we actually prefer the Flex 4 for most people, because you do get that record box software with it as well. So you, as a beginner, you get the choice of both types. Uh, but this is a good, basic, solid controller that's got everything you need to get started in DJing. So if you are into scratch DJing, turntablism, you want to start with something that's a bit more like a pair of turntables and a scratch mixer, albeit only slightly like it, as you can see, because it's tiny, this is the one for you. Right, so there's loads we haven't mentioned. We haven't mentioned the Hercules T7, which is like a cheap motorized controller. That's quite good. We haven't mentioned the controllers from Newmark, for instance, the bottom end controllers from Newmark. There's a lot of other stuff out there that you could look at. And if you own any of that stuff, great, you know, nothing wrong with it. But these are our current favorites for 2024. Okay. As you know, if you're a regular here on our shows at Digital DJ Tips, from the same studios that we do all of our training in, you know, we have 20, 22 DJ courses. We retired a few of our DJ courses recently because we're getting a bit old. Uh, we've got 22 DJ courses. You know, this is where most of them are filmed. So you're in the, you're in the inner sanctum here. Uh, as most of you know, it's 
not all about me telling you stuff every week. Uh, I do love to get you guys and girls involved as well. So I'm gonna head over to the chat now that's been coming in as we've been doing this. And I'm sure you've got opinions to share. There are always strong opinions when we talk software. Uh, and if you've, uh, if you've never seen the way this works before, I have all of you on the computer here. It looks like this. And I can scroll through all your comments. And so I'm gonna spend a little minute now just talking through uh, to a few of you about uh, about what you think. So hello to Isomatic, hello to Not My Name, who says the Rain 4 is a beast. Hello to Don and William and Danny and Doe. Uh, hello to Kesha. Uh, oh yeah, so uh, Doe says, uh, what was going on yesterday? Um, yeah, yesterday, I'll tell you exactly what happened. I'm not gonna, not gonna make it up if you were on YouTube. I think it's only on YouTube this happened. Uh, we were rearranging the studio uh, and I accidentally tapped the go, the go Live button on this thing and then immediately tapped Go Off Air. So like literally we were on air for one second. And then I went to YouTube and Facebook and Twitch and so on and, and made sure that there was nothing live and there wasn't. Uh, but it then put a blank live stream on YouTube for about four hours. So sorry if you tuned into that. So yes, Don, we're making up for that today. Hi Mixmaster G, hi DJ Long G. Hello Flavor Factory Records uh, and Mac. Uh, hello to the Ruckus and Danny, all our regulars here, good to see you. Right, what are you talking about? Tell me about your controllers. This is from Flavor Factory Records who says, I started with a Pioneer DJ SB3, uh, but I'm thinking to switch to Rekordbox because it seems easier to use with CDJs. Well, mm, it's easier to set up with CDJs for sure because you don't necessarily need to have a laptop. So if you're gonna play on like a system like this, then you just need to export your music and plug in a, a, a USB drive up here and then the whole thing will come to life. So you don't need the laptop, right? But once you've got the laptop set up, CDJs are just as easy, easy to use with Serato as they are with anything else. So really it's up to you how you, want to, how you want to play it. If you have a setup like this and you want to maybe use turntables alongside your CDJ, Serato uh, will be a good choice because you're going to need the laptop anyway if you're going to be using turntables to control the software, right? So then, yes, you can do that with Rekordbox, but you're not gaining anything by doing it with Rekordbox because you still need the laptop and you still need the software. So I'd say the setup's probably easier if you sometimes want to DJ away from your laptop, for sure. Uh, it might be worth going with Rekordbox because then you're using the same software to export your music to a USB to plug into something like that as you're using to DJ with your laptop at the times that you want to DJ with your laptop, right? So Rekordbox gives you both. As I said at the beginning, Serato is just software for DJing with its laptop DJ software. So there is a difference there. Uh, so, <laughs> anyone asking questions that aren't related to this, I love your questions, thank you. Come back when we're doing one of our general Q&As and I will answer them. Uh, Zombie Pixel is experimenting with DJing with cassettes, so I wanna hear more about that, but, uh, but, uh, but not today. So thank you for that, Zombie Pixel. So playing puddles, I've been reading the Flex 10 has got sound issues like pops, volume drops, and button delays. That, well, I don't know for sure, maybe it has, but I would say that's 99% likely to be the software and more important, the software not running smoothly on the laptop because the laptop is, is trying too hard. So make sure you've got a laptop that suits the specification of the software, especially if you're using stems, the laptop is gonna be pushing hard. You're gonna need a modern laptop. And at the very least, head into the settings, find the latency, it's called buffer in Serato, buffer, and slide it towards the higher number, which will make the whole controller a little bit laggy but it will make everything run smoother. It's always a trade-off between speed of use and smoothness. So have a look at that. By the way, if you are into Serato, uh, you own Serato, you're thinking of buying Serato, you're new to digital DJing and you wanna know how software works and all that, you should take a look at our Serato Made Easy course. Head to the Digital DJ Tips website, click on DJ Courses at the top there and scroll down until you find Serato Made Easy in the Software Courses section. Uh, this will talk you through everything you need to know about Serato and doing a good job with the software. You know, one of the things we always say is, you can become a better DJ, like an infinitely better DJ, without playing a single track, without literally doing one transition, just by learning your software. The number of DJs that simply don't understand their software always boggles my mind because it doesn't matter how good a DJ you are, if you don't understand what your software can do for you, you're not, you're not using all its features. So you can get ahead of people just by learning how your damn software works. So if you're interested in learning more about Serato, head over and have a look at our course. Uh, let's grab another live comment then. Now, please, people, keep calm. You're good at that. We don't get flaming and trolling on this channel. We're DJs, right? But only ask once. I can see at least one of you has been cut and pasting your question through and through and through on YouTube. I won't come to you 
any quicker if you do your question more than once. And if I see you doing it more than once, I will ignore you. So you're not going to gain anything. Ask once and if I can, I'll get to you. Uh, so this is from, uh, this is from, uh, Again, you see, I'm now scrolling past the same person doing it over and over again. It's bad manners. Uh, the rain performer, I talked about that earlier, didn't we? The rain performer, that's the rain four, but with motorized jog wheels. Now this is all hearsay. We don't know this for sure, but we're pretty sure it is because we got a pretty good video. This one here, imagine this one here with its four channels and it stems goodness and all that, but with motorized jog wheels. That's what we believe a new controller called the Rain 4, uh, the Rain Performer rather, is going to, uh, is going to be. Uh, and uh, it's quite exciting if you've wanted a motorized four channel DJ controller because they don't exist, uh, but they do now if the pictures, the videos, and the rumors are true. So Benny's saying that does look like an absolute beast, that Rain uh, Performer. It does indeed look like a beast. Phil says, I'd like to have a setup for scratching open format and one for club layout. I can't justify having both at the moment. I mean, this, this is a very nice setup for club DJing and scratching, but it's not cheap, right? I would never recommend, unless money is no object, thinking you need to buy something like this for home. You really don't. Phil, it's a dream, I get it, but, uh, but yeah, you need to. You certainly need to talk to your partner if you have one and say, look, I'm going to be earning money from my DJ. Please let me buy this stuff because otherwise it's a, it's a big ask, isn't it? Uh, maybe give up drinking entirely. I'm not talking about you particularly, Phil, but, you know, give up drinking and say, right, what would I have spent on drinking in the next three years? And go and spend that on DJ gear instead. You haven't lost anything then and your, your health will thank you. Anyway, um, I'm not here for personal lifestyle advice, so there's Pinch of salt time with that kind of thing. Right, okay, Mixmaster G, DDJ1000 for the win. Yes, we were talking about it. Best controller ever made, says Mixmaster G. Indeed, I agree, it was fantastic. Uh, and that's coming from a tractor user, uh, says Mixmaster G. Yes, I agree completely. Um, so Zombie Pixel says, I, can speak for, I can't speak for everyone, but growing up with cheap controllers and with virtual DJ, I can't get used to having the effects down the side of the mixer. No, that's fair enough. But if you went and played in clubs, then you'd have to get used to it because guess what? Club mixers have the effects down the side. It's just the way they are, right? So I think Pioneer DJ was saying, look, let's make controllers like that as well. It was certainly a winning choice for them. Uh, it did very, very well that. Uh, so I just ordered the Rain 4, says DJ Mad Vibes 1 over on YouTube. I know the new one with spinning platters is around the corner, but I think um, with the price drop of the 4, it's a good deal. Enjoy whatever you prefer. Look, they're going to live alongside each other. If we're right about the new one, they're going to live alongside each other because some people like motorized platters, some don't. I don't. I don't like motorized platters. I find it's easier to control the, 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 the music with, with fixed platters. They're not for me. So I would never go for a motorized controller over a fixed one. It's just what you want. And that's what I mean about starting off with beginner gear because you don't know at the beginning what you want. You might think, oh, I want motorized platters and go and buy one like that and, and decide you don't because you then go and play in a club and you realize that club gear doesn't have motorized platters and you think, well, that was a mistake. Now you've bought yourself a big heavy controller that costs far more than one that didn't have the motorized wheels and it was wrong for you, right? So start with cheaper gear. Um, so um, SNK's Sinks, Sinks and Beats, I think your name is, says it's a real shame that the Hercules T7 doesn't unlock the full version of Serato. By the time you purchase the full version, you start getting into the territory of more pro controllers. Yeah, that's why we don't recommend it. We just think it's, it's not good value for money thanks to Serato's pricing policies, frankly. Uh, so uh, let's see what else you've got to say about controllers. Uh, Peter says the Mixon 8 Pro is good and it's also a good price. Colm says, will Serato ever get track preview? Yes, yeah, so you can preview tracks without having to load them. Who knows? Uh, they do move quite slowly with their software development. That is definitely true. Wendell says the Roland 707M is also my favorite. You don't like my music, said I would use a separate graphic EQ to EQ the room. Any club or bar should have it already done. Yes, but they don't. Uh, having the ability to EQ and EQ with really good sounding and really flexible EQ inside your DJ controller is a fantastic thing to have uh, in my view. Uh, so um, the next 
comment based on controllers because there's a lot of stuff here that isn't based on controllers uh, and I'm going to stick to controllers here uh, is well it's kind of like coming at it from a different angle uh, Catherine uh, says I was just talking to a friend about how I want to start buying vinyl again uh, both of my parents were serious music lovers who passed their vinyl down to them uh, yeah you know the thing with all this gear is it does make people nostalgic for the old days of vinyl. I still own vinyl, I still buy vinyl, I still DJ with vinyl. Uh, and I think it's, as with everything, these things can live alongside each other. They all have pros and cons. But look, we do a survey every year. We're about to publish our survey for this year. 15,000 of you entered it. You, you might have entered it yourself, uh, where we ask you what gear you use. Trust me, very, very few people are DJing on vinyl in 2024. 70% of you are DJing on controllers and the rest of you are mainly DJing on the really good standalone gear like the XDJ gear or the Prime gear from Denon, you know, that's like a controller without the laptop. So vinyl is great, but it's definitely become a very niche thing nowadays. Do you think stems will be added to new hardware? This is a really good question from Jesse uh, because stems, you see the thing with controllers is one of the reasons 70% of people use them is that you get the new features fast. Stems comes along, bang, it's in software. Virtual DJ, DJ Pro, Serato, they're all dropping, they're all getting stems. It's not in any standalone gear. This, this will cost you the price of a small car. There ain't no stems in this. So the question is, when will stems come to gear that doesn't need you to plug a laptop in? Here's what I think is going to happen. I think what will happen is that the software you use to prepare your music on, so in order to prepare to DJ on, on gear like this, you need to prepare your music on a laptop and analyze the music and make your playlist and export the music to a, normally to a pen drive that plugs into there. That software will start pre-preparing stems for you. So you'll say, okay, I want the acapella and the instrumental and the drums and the bass line of these tracks. You'll put them in a folder, you'll say analyze for stems and it'll tick them all and say done for stems. And then when you plug into the pro gear, all those stems will be available to you. So all the work will have gone on in your software. And then it's just almost like playing a record in pro gear. I think it'll come, but I think that's how they'll do it because this gear would have to have very powerful computers built into it otherwise, which I just don't think is cost effective. That's my view anyway. Uh, DJ Lady B says, what's your opinion on the up and coming Rain performer, this motorized version allegedly of the Rain 4? Uh, do you think Rain should have gone with a different type of platter display? Well, we don't know what it's got, but I think it looks great. Uh, I can't wait to get my hands on one, frankly. It looks like they've taken the kind of platter display from the Pioneer DJ Rev 7 and stuck it in a rain controller, and it's a great platter. So uh, this is from Derek. I'm torn between selling my CDJ 2000s, which look a bit like these 3000s here, my CDJ 2000s uh, and mixer and buying an all-in-one controller or keeping them. Am I mad? Well, no, you're not mad, uh, but uh, they'll do roughly the same thing. An all-in-one controller is easier to move around. It's easy to set up in your home and to break down and so on. So I'd say portability is the thing there, Derek. Uh, but you've got to have a good reason, really. I mean, you're going to lose money selling a system like that and you won't be able to buy something that's as, you know, as valuable with the money you make. So you're going to need to put some extra money in to get something else. I'd say think quite hard about that. You've got a good system there. Right, one or two more, then I've got to go, people. Hello there, I love your channel, says the DJ Paul V. Uh, I was just wondering, uh, I have an XDJ RX2 and I want to use DVS. Uh, you can't, unfortunately. You just can't. It doesn't matter what extra stuff you add to it, you can't. You're going to need to get the XDJ XZ uh, to do that, my friend. Uh, right, so uh, we were talking about the difference between the club layout, weren't we, and the kind of controller layout where you have your effects at the top. Della Sarge says, I'm coming from 25 years of DJing on club style gear. Uh, now I've bought the DDJ Rev 5. We've talked about that one. I've changed from Rekordbox to Serato as well. What's your opinion? or and experience of um, this making this switch. Is it just a matter of time to get used to it? Yes, it is, but it'll take a bit of time. But yeah, you'll get used to it. I mean, it's a big switch. It's a big switch in software and a big switch in layout. You will get used to it, uh, but you know, it's difficult switching gear because you get so used. It's like playing an instrument, right? Imagine you were a guitar player and they slightly rearranged where everything is on the guitar. I mean, it's like someone, I don't know, changing the shape of your your lover or something. It's like, oh, everything's different. Oh, I don't like it. Because 
ultimately, the DJ gear is there for you to do a job. Ultimately, when you're using your gear, you just want to forget it's there and everything's where, you know, you're, you're looking at the crowd, you're thinking about the music, you're on the vibe. You don't want to think, how do I do that again? What's the pitch fader doing up there? It used to be down there, you know, it's like, oh, I think maybe, maybe um, instead of me being slightly sleazy and saying, here, changing the shape of your lover, maybe, maybe it'd be like the car, right? You're driving a car. The gear shift is always in the same place, right? Have you ever gone and driven a car in a foreign country where they drive on the other side of the road? If you've ever done that, you'll know exactly what I mean because you're driving along and you put your hand down and it's there instead of there. And you're like, oh my God, you keep hitting the door when you go, go to change gear. I mean, let's be honest, most of us have got automatic cars nowadays, but if they made the steering wheel a different shape or something, you know what I'm saying? Some things are just how they are and really it's best not to change them. So if you change your gear, yes, you're gonna find it's hard to get used to it, but you will get used to it in the end, trust me. Uh, right, I'm gonna stop in a minute because I gotta go. But listen, if you've got any more questions about this, just ask them on YouTube or Facebook underneath the video because uh, we'll get to you. My team will get to you and we'll try and help you with your Serato choices. Remember, there's an article on Digital DJ Tips where you can find out all about this. And also remember, there's a course on Digital DJ Tips called Serato DJ Pro 3 Made Easy. If you have got Serato, you're switching to Serato and you feel like you don't understand the software, just go and watch this little five minute video here and see if this course might be for you. It's helped thousands and thousands of DJs to get up to speed with this pretty complicated program. As you can see, it goes into a lot of detail about everything you can do on Serato. All right, it's been a blast today. I've got to go and put all these controllers away now, which is gonna take me a good half hour. Thank you very much for joining us. I'll be back again on Thursday for another live show somewhere on one of our channels doing something. We've changed everything up this year, so it might just be a student only show this Thursday. In fact, I think it is from memory, yeah. So students, come and join me in your Student Hub Facebook group. By the way, if you were to purchase this course, you'd be invited into the Student Hub Facebook group. Uh, and this week, we are doing something called Inside Track. And in Inside Track, we take three burning issues in the world of DJing, and we talk about them together uh, in a small group inside our training platform. It's a lot of fun. We'll be doing that this week, this Thursday. If you're not a student, you're a subscriber, you're just tuned in, you're having fun being with us, that's great. Back next, uh, next Tuesday, same time, 4 p.m. London, 11 a.m. Eastern with another one of these. Until now though, till then rather, from the studio, it's Phil saying get good, get out there, make the moments, and I will see you again very soon. Bye for now.